Hi everyone, so this is part of my series on exposure, and today I'll be covering the basics of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. But more specifically, I'm going to be talking about the exposure numbers, and the math involved, and also how these things are related together, so that you can take more control of your camera and take better pictures. So let's just start with aperture. Basically, aperture is a way for you to control how much light can pass through the lens. It's not too different than like, say, curtains on a window. The more you open the curtains on the window, the more light that can come in. The more you close the uh, curtains on the window, the less light that comes through. And on a lens, they have what they call aperture blades that open and close to uh, adjust the amount of light that passes through the lens onto the sensor in the camera. So if we look at this lens, for example, right now I have basically the curtains wide open, but then as I adjust the aperture, you can see that I'm closing how much light can pass through this lens. And this is all the way closed, and then this is all the way opened, just like so. And that's all we're doing with the aperture. And the aperture can be assigned numbers, which we'll get into next, but I just want to understand that aperture is basically a way for you to control how much light can pass from the front of the lens through the back of the lens onto the camera. Now let's talk about the second component of exposure and that's shutter speed. And it's not too unlike controlling exposure through aperture, but rather than opening the curtains for a certain amount to let a certain amount of light in, what it does is it closes the curtains then opens and closes them very quickly. And depending on how long those shutters are open or those curtains are open will determine the exposure of the image. So the longer the curtains are open, the brighter the image, and the shorter the curtains are open, the darker the image. So let me give you a quick demonstration of the shutter mechanism. But basically I have the shutter set to two seconds on this camera. And right now the shutter curtains are open so that I can sort of compose my shot on the back of the live view. However, as soon as I push the shutter button, the shutter is going to close very quickly, then open back up to begin the exposure. And then it's going to stay open for two seconds, then close the shutter curtains to end the exposure and write that to your memory card. So compose my shot. So I'll close quickly. Two seconds later, the shutter curtains close and ends the exposure. Now, if you're using electronic shutter or silent shutter, as it's sometimes called, instead of physically closing and opening shutter curtains, what it does is it just turns the sensor off, turns it on for two seconds, then turns it back off again uh, to record the exposure, then comes back on so you can recompose. So that's why there's no sound when you use silent mode, is because there's no physical closing and opening of shutter curtains. Now, ISO, or ISO as some people call it, it doesn't really matter. But basically, it just brightens the image, and it does this digitally, and it's the last step in the exposure process in your camera. So, for example, I take a picture based on the aperture and the shutter speed that I set. A certain amount of light will hit the sensor, and then the camera will look at the ISO setting and then raise the exposure or raise the brightness of the image, and, and in some cases lower, but generally you raise the brightness of the image before writing that picture to your memory card. And it's not too dissimilar to the Lightroom image here I have up. So I took this picture and it was a little bit dark and I should have set a little higher ISO, but because I didn't do that, I can do this in post-processing in almost the exact same way. Basically, in software, I just raise the exposure up a little bit and we're done. And that's exactly how ISO works in your camera. It captures an image, and then based on your ISO setting, it'll raise the brightness of the image before writing it to your memory card. All right, let's get into the exposure settings, the numbers, the math involved when you're doing exposure, and what all the settings mean, and how they're all related to each other. Now let's look at the kind of numbers you'll be dealing with when we're talking about exposure settings. And really there's only these three, right? We'll be working with whole numbers, like 100, 200, 400, or we'll be working with decimals, like 1.4, 2.0, or we might be working with fractions, like 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 one hundredth, 1 one thousandth, etc. And generally speaking, when we're working with whole numbers, we're only dealing with ISO. 
And when we're dealing with decimals, generally we're dealing with aperture numbers, or sometimes it's going to be called f stops. And I'll talk about this later. And then fractions, of course, all that's left is generally we're talking about shutter speeds. Now, as I said, when you're working with whole numbers, generally you're working with ISO. And the range of numbers that we usually see with ISO is like between 100 and 6400. Now, I've seen ISO numbers as low as, say, 64, and I've seen them as high as like 400,000. But most photographers, they work within that range between 100 and 6400. And there's certainly reasons to go higher or to go lower, but that's generally what the, the kind of numbers we work with. And again, there's no fractions, so you're not going to have an ISO 250.37 or an ISO of one quarter. You know, it just, you're not going to see that. You're always going to be working with whole numbers like ISO 100, ISO 160, ISO 400, etc. Now, a key thing you have to understand though, is if you remember, ISO is basically artificially raising the brightness of the exposure based on your setting. But there's always a base ISO in the camera say 100 uh, like in my nikons in my olympus cameras the base iso is 200. And what that base iso means is that the camera is not adding or subtracting any brightness digitally to the image after it's been captured so if i have a base iso of 200 and i take a picture at iso 200 i know that the camera didn't apply any artificial brightness to the image or darkness for that matter However, if I raise the ISO to say, you know, ISO 800, I know that the cameras had to brighten the image up to that level before it saved it to the card. And there's some compromises when you do that, and I'll talk about that later. But uh, just know that a camera has a base ISO, and when you change or deviate from that base ISO, the camera kicks in and digitally darkens the image. Like if you were to go to ISO 64, or brightens the image, like if you were to go to ISO 800. All right, now let me show you the ISO in the camera. I'm using my Olympus here. Now if I go into the super control panel, it takes me to the ISO, and you can see it says ISO 200. This is the recommended ISO. Really all that means is that we're at the base ISO. Now I can raise the ISO, and as you can see, it goes up in nice whole numbers, right? There's no fractions, there's no decimals, you know, 1600, 2000, 2500, etc. And also, let me show you, when we go below the base ISO, it says ISO low or ISO extension, telling you that the camera is now artificially lowering the exposure from what it actually captured. And honestly, any ISO outside of the base ISO 200 should be called an extension, in my opinion. Uh, and they should just give you the number instead of saying ISO low. Uh, just like they do, if I go all the way up to ISO 6400, you'll see that it says now it says ISO 6400, ISO extension. So it's telling me that now we're going outside of the rated ISO range of this camera. And let me just talk about that for a second, because that can be a little confusing. Now, if you look at camera specs, a lot of times you'll see like a base ISO range between 100 and 25,600, like on my Nikon. On the Olympus, I think I've seen it at like between 200 and 6400. And this is a totally arbitrary number uh, put out by the manufacturers. Because really, any ISO outside of the base ISO should be called an ISO extension because that's when the camera starts to add brightness or subtract a little bit based on the number that you set it to. This base ISO range that camera manufacturers publish is basically the range of ISO that they will consider gives acceptable image quality from their camera. And again, it's totally arbitrary. And what manufacturers should really be doing is saying the base ISO is 200 and you can extend that ISO up to say 25,000 or you know 200,000, whatever that number might be, and call all of that extension, not say that this camera has a base range of say 200 to 6400 or 100 to 25,000. I think it's a little bit misleading. Now shutter speed numbers, generally you're working in fractions, uh, like 1 100th of a second, 1 500th of a second, 1 1000th of a second, 
but you can be working in decimals, fractions, or even whole numbers once you start to get the shutter speed slower into the few seconds range. So if you're one second, two seconds, 1.5 seconds, uh, that's when you kind of kind of go into other numbers. And you have to be a little bit careful on cameras because it can be a little confusing, and I'll show you in just a minute. But let's just understand that the faster the shutter speed, the darker the exposure is going to be. So when we have very fast shutter speeds, like one eight thousandth of a second, that can be potentially a very dark image because it's not letting very much light hit the sensor, right? It's only letting in one eight thousandth of a second worth of light. And then longer shutter speeds, say 30 seconds, let in tons of light uh, or stays open a long time to capture as much light as it can. So just generally speaking, faster shutter speeds darken the image, longer shutter speeds brighten the image. Now, as I was saying, shutter speed numbers can be confusing sometimes because you're dealing with fractions, decimals, and whole numbers all in the same camera. Uh, but typically, like I said, you're at one one hundredth or one quarter, one half. But when you start to get closer to one second, you could be at like one over one point three seconds. You could be at one second, one point five seconds, which is a decimal, right? But most cameras will put a little double quote right next to the number to let you know that you are over or you're at one second or higher where you're no longer working with a fraction. Now, another problem when you're working with shutter speed on your camera is a lot of cameras don't show you these numbers as fractions. They might show you one one hundredth of a second. It's just 100 on the camera, you know, in the live view. Or they might show you, you know, uh, 500. When really, you're at one five hundredth of a second. So it's a huge difference, right? So let me just show you in the camera. Now, right now, I have the shutter speed set at one one hundredth of a second. However, on the back of the camera, it says 100 right next to the aperture, which is F5. We'll talk about that next. But look at the shutter speed. It just says 100. It doesn't say one one hundredth of a second. And I can raise the shutter speed. And it goes to nice whole numbers going up all the way up to, I think this camera's one four thousandth is the limit in mechanical shutter. But when I go down... Let's go down to a fraction here. I'm actually at one third of a second here, one over three, one over 2.5, one over two. So right now we're at one half second. Now we're at one over 1.6, one over 1.3. Now we're at one second, and now you can, I know that because there's a double quote there. I can click again. Now I'm at 1.3 seconds. 1.6 seconds so now we're in a decimal system versus fractions uh two seconds and so on and then as i go higher it just goes right to whole numbers so 15 seconds 20 seconds 25 seconds 30 seconds and this will go up to 60 seconds on this camera now let me show you on the canon what it looks like because it's a little bit different now, when we look at the Canon here at the top left next to the big letter M, it says 1 over 100. So that clearly says we're at 1 one hundredth of a second. And then as we go down and as we get closer to 1 second, let's stop here. You'll see we're at 1 fourth of a second, 1 over 4. Now, when I click over one more, you'll see that it says 0 seconds point three. So we're actually now in a decimal system 0.3 seconds now in the olympus what it showed was when we were at one quarter second one fourth the olympus showed just the number four so you, so the one over four was implied on the canon here when it says 0.3 seconds on the olympus it was still in the fraction system so it displayed the number three meaning it was one over three or one third of a second. So pretty close to 0.3 seconds, one third of a second, 0.3 seconds. And then here we're at 0.4 seconds. And on the Olympus, it said 2.5. And if you divide that out by one, you get one over 2.5, you get 0.4 seconds. And this one's pretty easy, right? 
On the Olympus, it said that it showed the number two, but on the Canon, it's showing 0.5 seconds. So on the Olympus, two means one half or one half a second. On the Canon, they just say 0.5 seconds. And then as we go further down, uh, we go into uh, like right here, two, two and a half seconds, 3.2 seconds, and then it goes right into whole numbers. So just be aware of that when you're working with your camera, especially when you're going from fractions to decimals to whole numbers, there's that little bit of uh, inconsistency from one brand to the next. Aperture numbers are generally expressed in fractions up to whole numbers. So you'll see typically numbers like 1.4, 1.8, 2.0, etc. And the range of numbers that you usually work with when you're talking about apertures are between 1.4 and 22. I've seen higher and I've seen a little bit lower, but this is a general range of apertures that you'll be working with. Another thing to note is usually people refer to these numbers as f-stops or f-numbers. So you'll see them written down a lot of times with the letter f in front of them. So people say, I'm at f1.4 or I'm at f8. Uh, you might even see it written down with a little slash in between. So f slash 2.0. And that's to remind you, or the reason I think is to let you know that this aperture number is a ratio or relationship between the focal length of the lens versus the opening of the little iris inside the lens, the aperture blades. Uh, it's not an actual uh, hard number, it's a relationship number or a ratio. So just understand that the higher the number, the smaller the opening in the lens. And as you lower this number, the larger the opening in the rear of the lens via the aperture blades becomes, thereby allowing more light in. So it's an inverse relationship. Now in the old days, the lenses had the aperture rings and everything right on them. But on our digital cameras, you have to look at the screen. And on the screen here, you'll see that it says 100, which represents the shutter speed of 1 over 100th of a second. And then the aperture right next to it says f5.0. So again, we're using decimals, but it has a little letter f in front of it to let you know that that's the aperture number and nothing else. And by changing the aperture, rotating the front dial, again, it goes to whole numbers. This lens goes up to f22. And then as I go back the other way, you can see we're working in decimals and the lowest or maximum aperture of this lens is f3.5 and that's the kit lens it has a range between f3.5 and f22 so hopefully now you have a little better understanding of these numbers when we're talking about exposure settings uh, and some of the inconsistencies especially in shutter speed like when you're trying to change settings when it goes from fractions to decimals to uh, whole numbers but also i want you to understand how they affect exposure by either letting more light in or limiting how much light comes in via shutter speed or via aperture. And then how ISO is really simply an artificial way of adding brightness to the image. Now in my next video, I'm gonna be talking about the relationship between these three exposure settings because they're actually all indexed on the same scale of light. And this will really help you to understand that when you increase the shutter speed, how much do you need to increase your ISO or lower your aperture to maintain the same exposure? And that's really critical and it'll help you to really push the limits of your camera so you can take better pictures. Now, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. But either way, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.